getting a little nervous there. <laughs> like, is this thing ever going to pull down? Hey everybody, Dutchman Mods and Repairs. I wanted to show you my setup for what I did for pulling the vacuum on this, because there's a whole bunch of stuff out there on how to pull vacuum. And I'm just showing what I did on mine, what I use and how it works. So what I have down here, this is a Harbor Freight vacuum pump. Uh, there was a label on the side of it. I can't tell you if that thing's a one, two, three CFM vacuum pump. It's not a big heavy duty one. I've used it on my automobile stuff. It's It worked on my system. I don't have a lot of line set in here. Probably I might have uh, up to the evap and back down I'm gonna say 60 to 80 feet of line set. It's something, you know, other people might have a lot more line uh, going from their condenser to their evaporator coil, wherever it's at. So as you can see, this is the manifold gauge set that I used. I used the link from the DIY HVAC guy to uh, just help him out uh, in purchasing that. Yeah, it's a little chunk of change, but you know, I figured I'm in this for the long haul. This is something I wanna learn for myself going forward. The CPS, gauge here for measuring the, the vacuum and microns bought that again chunk of change but i'm glad i got it really am glad i got it because i could really see what i pulled down to this is a core removal tool that i use as a light isolation valve from the system to the pump because you can't use the pump as a shutoff there will be bleed back on that but anyhow so my connections right now both sides are open up I had them shut. The system is completely empty, so I didn't have to worry about is there Freon in there or is not? Do I need to pump back the Freon into the uh, the condenser? Not in that kind of scenario. I had a massive leak in the evaporator and lost everything in the system, so that's my scenario. So coming over to the side here, you can see I have the blue hose connected to my suction line, the big line, the red one connected to my liquid line, which is the smaller diameter line. Those come into my gate set here. I had those closed, connected up everything, connected my yellow line to my pump, up into the uh, the core tool with the valve on here for, for isolating, right? And then the, the micron gauge there, micrometer or psiometer, I'm not, uh, what they call, oh, there's actually the name on it right there, knucklehead. Vacrometer, I would never guess. But anyhow, that's how it's all hooked up. So here's what I did. I left those shut, powered the, the gauge on, let it do its initial little startup, turn the pump on, and let it pull back in on the yellow line, and that's with this open, so it would be down in line with, with the actual yellow line. And then I slowly opened up each side, high, the, the red and the blue side, high and low. You could definitely hear the pump change its tune from you know very high pitched sound to much much lower the gauge was giving me little circular motion across the screen no numbers and it did that for almost two minutes i was actually get, like freaking out like oh crap i got a i got a major leak upstairs because i i did uh stay bright soldering on the the filter dryer line the high pressure line the low pressure line uh, everything upstairs in the attic I did not do a pressure test. I did not have the, the nitrogen equipment to do that. That's just what I'm doing. That's the one step. Probably if I could go back and do this over again, I, you know, I vacillated on, you know, should I do it? Should I not do it? And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna try it. Uh, if it worst case scenario, I gotta, you know, go and get the stuff and, and pressure test, I'll pressure test it. But anyhow, two and a half minutes in, then I saw the pressure way up around 55, 60,000 microns, and then it started coming down, coming down, coming. It was coming down pretty fast too, a lot faster than what I thought it was going to. And uh, I pulled vacuum down to 250 microns on this system. And I did that for probably about 15 minutes and then closed the valve. And that's why you need this valve here because you have to isolate the system because you want to make sure that your system is actually going to hold that vacuum. Uh, you want to make sure you don't have any leaks anywhere in the system whatsoever. And what you're looking for is a deep vacuum, uh, less than 500. I was really happy with the 250. And then I sat there for 10 minutes to do the decay test for 10 minutes and it went up to about 320 microns. And then I had more work I needed to do upstairs in the attic, and so I left that. So let me power back up again. 
I left it for about three and a half hours while I was working up in the attic. So I got, I, I let it sit here a long time. And so what you're reading on the gauge, as we get it over here, there we go. The microns, 390, 400. So definitely under 500, and the decay test is un you pull it to under 500, and within 10 minutes it shouldn't go above 500. So I'm pretty happy with what I've got here. Okay, so I just wanted to give a quick video, or not so quick video, on what I did here. If you've got any questions on how I did it or things I ran into, any of that with this particular setup, let me know. Again, hit up the DIY HVAC guy, great guy, great channel. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. If you like the content, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Join us on our journey as we work on things around the house and the driveway and everything in between. This is Dutch Out. Have a great day.